Once I get my green, I get my cover. Yeah. 
I got a phrase. I can't even because I get harassed. I can't use the phrase. 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 I can't use
I don't believe so, no. Uh, that was really Reminding myself of this. Okay, so this one, um, 
Good evening. On behalf of dear Alan Carpenter, Alan Carpenter has lived, Alan Carpenter has died, and Alan Carpenter lives still. This evening, we are going to honor and celebrate the gift of Alan Carpenter for each of us. It's a gifting that God has made across time of human beings, one to the other. And this evening, we'll listen as the poet has said of us humans that our names are but that small piece of music that invites us to listen to the deeper music that plays orchestrally through a person's living, through a person's loving to a person, the meaning of a person's life plays orchestrally, which is to say from the core mystery of what it is to be a human. We're going to listen to some music in just a second. And I assure you, you are going to hear music tonight that you have not heard at a memorial service before. <laughs> and that's because it's all heavy metal. And so prepare yourselves yeah. And I dare say your laughter is letting us know that we have permission to be real with one another tonight. And we have that because of Ellen's being real with those people he met along the way, full on engaging and coming into relationships with persons according to the capacity that God gave him to be a gift to each of us for each of our journeys. And so now our opening piece of music I've never introduced and opening a piece of music at a funeral that's been uh, that's been done by ACDC. So <laughs> we're about to hear that opening piece. And when I asked Skip and Nan to make the selections on behalf of something their father really loved, I had no idea. <laughs>
Shortly after Alan got the Chrysler. I think that was Alan. Happy fun with his friend Casper Skip. Uh, shortly after Alan got the Chrysler and Ed and I were driving with him, and he showed us these this lighting system that he had gotten inside the car, and they were those kind of LED lights that are timed or connected somehow to the sound system in the car. So the lights would grow brighter and dimmer according to the beat of the music. <laughs> this was when it, Alan was 84. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of Alan's family, I extend their gratefulness to you for joining with them tonight and naming and claiming the gift of Alan to each of us in our lives as we prepare in the mystery of things to return that gift whence it has come to us, even unto God. And to you, Alan's family, I extend the condolences and sympathies of more people than can meet an eye. Wider and wider circles of love knew and know Alan for his loving, his love of beauty, his love of connecting with people, his love of making the journey very special. And this evening, as we celebrate that in remembrance of Alan, we have an opportunity to appreciate new dimensions and surprising dimensions of all the gifts that God makes to us. Peace and grace from God descending arise within us and between us. And from us to one to the other, they extend ourselves to create worlds within worlds. And they gift us one to the other love and beauty and meaning. Places we can make ourselves at home within with the divine gift of God's self-giving love that's vulnerable, as Alan was vulnerable. In his passing this last week, Skip noted that as he struggled to breathe on the last night of his, of his life, he still had the sense of purpose and meaning, be able to gesture to Skip that he would keep his chin up. These are hours within his dying. And he had that presence to let his son know that he would somehow make it through this. And he expects the same of each of us this evening as we look to find our way in, in Nan's phrasing, uh, find our way after we've lost our biggest cheerleader and someone who we don't know how we're going to make it without. And so let us prepare ourselves now in the spirit of prayer as we pray to God uh, over Alan. On behalf of Alan Carpenter, his family, those who now survive Alan, O God, and those who have gone before him, we pray that you will join with us and accompany us 
through our grieving. As we seek solace in life against loss through death, we seek out one another this evening to join together in our mourning and our grieving, our hearts opening themselves to seek your healing from within, and as well to beckon your strength to help us carry on. For the gift of life you spoke into being in Alan Lee Carpenter has now returned to you, and we miss him keenly already. His open-eyed gaze at beauty around him, his eyes smiling slyly, his caring ways of examining himself and calling himself the loving task, his love and treasuring of beauty within and without. We trust that with you, O oh God, in his return, Alan has found the truest of homes, a home in eternity, and that we by and by shall join with him there. We give you our special thanks for the rooms prepared for Alan, welcoming rooms prepared for us all in truth, rooms our Lord Jesus has secured for those who follow him trustingly through death into life everlasting. And we pray through the haze of our grieving as we ourselves look towards death's horizon for us, such that our mourning and our loss will soon, very soon be lifted up. And joy in the gift of Alan will stay with us, consoling us and accompanying us until we meet face to face again. This we pray through our hearts broken open, even as we trust you welcoming Alan home into your adoring, enduring love. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Mm -hmm. And so our first scripture is from Isaiah 55, and it's a scripture in which the, the poet Isaiah describes how it is God speaks us into being and calls us out of being home to God at the end of our lives. And that we will have served those purposes that God had in mind. And this Hebrew scripture reminds us not to be presumptive of what we know or think to know God is. And it opens with that warning and proceeds to let us know that nevertheless, joy and safety are in God's mind and heart. So from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 through 13. For my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways, says the Lord. For as the, higher, the, the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts, my ways higher than your ways. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, fertilizing the earth and making it germinate to provide seed for the sower and food for the eater, so it is with the word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me unfulfilled or before having achieved what I sent it forth to do. And so you shall go out with joy and be led back in safety. The mountains and the hills will break into joyful cries before you, and all the trees of the countryside will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Our script, our reading tonight from the Psalms is Psalm 23, and daughter Nan is going to read for us that psalm now. Thank you, everyone. Um, the Psalms of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not love. He maketh me lie down in peace. He readeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He feedeth me in the place of righteousness, righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Yeah. Final reading for this evening is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 13. And in some traditions, when the gospel is read, folks stand to honor what 
being spoken from the, the Lord's life. And so we're not going to be together for a long time, but I bet you could do with a stretch. So I invite you to stay up. <laughs> and so from our Lord's gospel, I love you the way my, the way my father has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done. Kept my father's commands. Made myself at home in his love. I've told you these things for a purpose. That my joy might be your joy. And your joy fully mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. Parents are reading from Holy Scriptures. May God add to the blessing of hearing, the blessing of healing in our hearts. May God our world. Please be seated. Amen. Amen. Speaking with Nan the other night, we noted that things that make a difference in the course of a very long life include those phenomena of forgiveness, connection, and then love winning out. If we live long enough, we make somebody upset. It just happens. And we're pretty good at getting things messed up, us humans, because we're kind of messy creatures. God knew that. We had that from our creation stories, and we have it from our folk, from our own lived lives. And I think nothing represents that better than an experience that I had with Alan. And after that, I'm going to invite Skip up so that he'll tell us those praise things that come from his life with his dad. But before that, we're going to have another piece of heavy metal music. I would <laughs> That'll be the getting ready for skip. So the thing that the thing I want to tell is that it was about four years ago when a member of United Baptist Church, Alan's church family, had hit upon hard times and he needed a place to stay. So among the persons I thought of was Alan. Alan's companion in life is Rambo, and Rambo's a friendly dog and he doesn't bite. And so I figured it would be a good match. And I didn't know and I didn't presume. So I called Alan. And Alan's immediate response was, no, I'm not going to do that. Why should I do that? I don't, I don't have to do that. And I knew Alan well enough to know this is what you get sometimes and what you get for me sometimes. So I said, good enough. I went down my list. The next day I got a call from Alan. And Alan said, you know, Pastor, I've been thinking about it. And the Lord has done so much for me. Who am I to say, I'm not going to do something for somebody else? Where do I get off saying that? Alan was of a practice to overhear himself, a Shakespearean term. And those most creative characters in Shakespeare and in the Lord's creation are the ones that can overhear themselves and make a correction. Now, Alan did. And he said, I want that person to come stay with me. Is it too late? I said, it's not. And so it worked out. They lived with one another. I did think there would be a mortality at one point, but there wasn't. <laughs> and Alan maintained his composure through the whole of it. And at this point, he had to be 90, I think, maybe 89. And at 74, my ways are more than set. Alan was able to adapt and cause his heart to open for someone who was suffering. And I can think of no better way to express how it is that we turn ourselves around at times to do the thing that needs doing that's not in our bailiwick, so to speak. It's outside of it. But this is what we call the presence of the Lord, self-giving love coming home to roost, inviting us to make ourselves at home in our better sense. And now I did it. As you will now hear Pink Floyd describe. Of the pain of the and the world they say it's all not there. Don't accept 
Now I invite Skip Carpet to come up and offer some praise for his dad. Sure. 
because you have a party for Carmen. I want to start off with McNabb and good hour work that we have. They have to see Randolph to this person's car. So I took the car to him a few different times. And he kept saying to me, I can't wait till I get home. I knew so I would have had to downstairs. I said, okay, Dad. But Dad came home. I spent the night with him that night that he came home. And he says, I'm still working for that bathroom. I said, I am too, Dad. <laughs> but it's got an orange planet. <laughs> well, I told Dad that I keep looking. I never did find an orange toilet. <laughs> it was one of a kind of the choice, one of a kind. These are, we had our scraps. Everybody has a courage to I guess, but in the long run, he was a very, very loving and caring person. And I'm going to miss him a lot. I just want to thank everybody again for coming. Thank you. And so it's the desire of the family that we spend a little bit of time breaking the microphone, <laughs> um, inviting you all, if you have a, a bit of a story that you'd like to say aloud, a moment that describes Alan quintessentially for you, that the family invites that we share that now. Um, as a way of honoring the gift of Alan. And I remind you, our project here tonight is to know that Alan lived, Alan died. And while Alan lives still in dimensions that our minds don't reach like we reach across the room to one another, Alan's presence is very much here. It can precipitate laughter. It, we can say when we hear something, anytime I hear Pink Floyd in the future, I'm gonna connect it with Alan. I'm gonna consider that's Alan connecting with me. To let me know that I don't know everything and there's more to discover in life. And so is there some is there a moment that's a recur occurring to any of you that you'd like to share aloud that for you is a quintessential Alan Carpenter moment? Yes, David. I don't know if we need it, but well actually this helps me go through the digital world. Okay. All right. Well uh, you know Alan and Southside Baptist and then United Baptist kind of go together. And the one thing that everybody from uh, Southside Baptist and then United Baptist have to be together with First Baptist, they all know that when it came prayer time, prayer requests, that the best dressed person in the whole church would stand up and say, God is good, God is good all the time. And that was Alan. Every Sunday he was able to come. And uh, when he did, he'd miss it. He'd miss that, that uh, praise of his that, uh, that set it off. Thank you. David is the deacon of the United Baptist Church and a visitor who visits uh, better than many pastors of us pastors do. Well, and has he said something about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not about me. Alan was also a deacon, and I learned how to be a deacon from him. And I learned a lot about visitation from him, how to visit in the shuttings and such. And when it came his time to be uh, not as mobile as, as he'd like to be, I, I thought it was only proper that I spend and make the effort to uh, see him as often as I could. And I treasure those times when I saw him on his front porch, on his back porch, in the kitchen. It was great. And those are memories. And I think that tribute to him is a tribute to you also that we learn at the feet of others. And so we're here. My name is Roy. My first interaction with Alan was I lived in Corning and I bought a pickup truck. It was about 1996, I think. And here was a picture I went there to buy a car for me, and they wanted to use a credit card check. And I didn't have a credit card, so I didn't know, but I trusted him. There was something about him. Since then, I've used those same checks to buy with different cars for an old house. But then, in 1997, I bought a house, and I was smoking three packs of cigarettes a day, and I wanted to learn how to stop smoking. 
So there were some meetings we went to to learn how to stop smoking. And him and I became really good friends with them. I had met Joyce at the, uh, the Tops parking lot. This Vietnam War veterans had a, had a little stimulant there to raise funds. And I hadn't seen her. But I said, Alan, you go to the Baptist church. You know somebody named Joyce. So he took me over there and introduced me to Joyce again. We knew each other 27 years before that. And that's now we've been together for 25 years. Wow. So that's, and the biggest thing is aging. I knew he was older than me, but I never knew he was 21 years old. <laughs> I, I, I yeah, exactly. That's well said. Thank you. Anyone else? I, I, I have to say that Alan's surprising capacity to surprise just never stopped here. Um, the music was another example. I should have seen it coming, but I didn't. Uh, but that, that capacity to be surprising is what we understand from the Hebrew scriptures as it comes into our Christian scriptures. I'm sure our Lord had a wild, and Jesus had a wild and wonderful sense of humor. But the seriousness of Roman occupation and his death precluded most of that from being scribed down. I have no doubt that it did. And certainly with Alan, we were introduced to all of those dimensions of self-humor that make it possible for us to meet one another, to not alarm one another or frighten one another off. Alan's capacity to be so self-disarming and welcoming it reminds me of my friend Ed and Dan and others in the United Baptist Church that have that capacity to be welcoming in the way that says we're all in this together. And things are regularly falling apart, including our bodies. And Alan made that journey with courage and commitment, truly making himself at home within that love that we all share and being a great human being in the process. So here's to that. Now, any other story that we would like to tell before we move into a time? We've played two pieces of music. We have one to go. So we, we can move into our time of prayer. But if there's anybody who has something, I want to say, Alan was blessed in this way of relationships by making great neighbors with people. So Ruben Davila and Doug Frito are superior neighbors, and they made it possible. Yes, Brad is a friend. Let me say, Alan was himself wanting to get himself in a pickle that he wasn't going to get out of. Right? So, so he needed those neighbors. He wouldn't be with us if Reuben hadn't realized he hadn't seen Alan in a while and Alan had locked himself up into his attic and he was not going to get out of it. And it was not happening. And somehow or other, Reuben, with those vibes that he has, picked up that he hadn't seen Alan and that wasn't the only time Alan screwed up. <laughs> Just let me say, and his brother Bill and his daughter Debbie are with us today through the strange dimensions that the pandemic has brought us of Zoom. And the ability so lots of folks are connecting us with Alan and they're all smiling to know Alan was a human being like the rest and that's the Christian message we need forgiveness we get God's love not because we warrant or deserve it but because that's who God is and God just like us is very frequent with messes and frequent with messes so Alan had a lot of messes like the rest of us and it was his open and vulnerable stance with everybody around him that had an odd layer of a commanding presence on top. I don't know how he did it, but 12-year-old Ben Allen, who was just getting into his smart allergy phase, noted that Allen had a hat that matched. He had a hat for every suit that he had. And so when he walked in, Ben noted to his mother, you know, Mom, I think Alan, no, I don't think, I know Alan belongs to the York, York Avenue mom. <laughs> and after meeting Rambo with Alan, went on to say, and, and Rambo belongs to the same mom. <laughs> and this was all given to us by that sense of style that with, within which Alan carried himself in a balanced fashion. And that balancing was to the Lord to know that God is good all the time, even when I fall and break my hip, and double pneumonia is going to keep returning and take me from this world. <clears throat> even then, to be able to lift your head when you can't speak and point to your throne so your kids know 
you're going to keep your chin up. That's it. Thanks be to God for that. Now, Rebecca, we're going to invite, invite you to join me in a time of prayer. And that prayer is going to segue into the Lord's Prayer. And let's use deaths as we pray together that. Let's be in a spirit of prayer. For your spirit woven into the fabric of creation, O oh God, for your eternal overlapping with time and the life of earth interlaced with heaven's vitality, we give you thanks. For your untamed creativity, your boundless mystery, your passionate yearnings planted deep in the soul of every human being, we give you thanks. Give us the grace, we pray, to reclaim these depths to uncover this treasure and to liberate these longings within us and in being set free in our own spirit to act for the well-being of your creation. In Alan Lee Carpenter, we glimpse a special gift you created for the well-being of your creation, a gift for us each and all on our journeys. Son, brother, husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, uncle, friend, neighbor, and so very much more. In Alan's soul, we receive a gift of your purposing, O oh God. And just like you, Alan cared and loved in ways that are the verb form of love. Action that made for an atmosphere wherein the glint in Alan's eye gives us to know that caring and artfulness often intertwine for your purposes. Style comes into and out of us, giving musculature to our personalities and grace to our ways of carrying ourselves in your creation. Alan carried himself with an overhearing ear, O oh God, catching himself when need be, so that his self-preoccupation could be transformed into a self-giving occupation with sharing your mercy and your grace. Whether in church or on the road or in his armchair, warming near the fire, Rambo would never be far at all from Alan's thoughts, a canine companion who enjoys Alan's dearest heart. Across all the decades of their togetherness, a togetherness that grew out of Alan's abiding love of dearest Betty, dearest of all dears for Alan. Alan's heart raced in dear Betty, even as Betty raced at the Shemung Speedrome on a, or on a Texas highway, doing 125 as they flew under a Texas Ranger on the overpass, who followed them for 10 miles, but no ticket. He must have thought after seeing them, wow. Was I dreaming? <laughs> and the dream was and is that the music Betty and Alan make never ends and now delights all heaven in their racing together. In these moments of quiet, we pray in our silence, you and Alan and Betty and all becoming one forever. And now we pray the prayer, prayer Jesus taught us to pray always together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we have done, we are not in I'm going to say the words of commendation now and then offer a benediction after which our final piece of music will play. Tomorrow there will be a committal service at the graveside uh, that the family uh, invites those of you who can make it if you'd like to come to come. It is supposed to snow tonight. <laughs> Calls us into mind if God is good all the time. <laughs> or like snow. Um, so, uh, but the committal service will be then tomorrow at 11 to pray and all folks invited to like to come. So, I invite you to stand now for the commendation and the benediction and then be seated again for um, Ozzy Osbourne seeing us. <laughs>
Into your hands we commend, O God, your child, Alan Lee Carpenter. Acknowledge we, we pray a sheep of your own fold, a, a lamb of your own flock, a son of your own redeemer. Receive him into the arms of your most tender mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the company of the saints in life. Amen. May the road rise up to meet us as we take our leave from one another. May the wind be always at our back. May the sun shine warm upon our faces, and the rains fall soft upon our fields until we meet again. May the blessed God hold you in the palm of his hand. Please be seated. The name of this piece is See You on the Other Side.
Her family would like to thank Adrian Bal um, Aaron Barrows, a location manager for Old Tops, did a great job that uh, she's had Old Tops do for the family. So we thank you, Adrian. You've been a treasure for us, and we're very grateful for your service. Tomorrow, the the interment is at 11.30. 1130. 11.30 at Forest which is the one up over Jerusalem Hill. So we thank you all for gathering tonight, and so we are dismissed now. Uncle Bill, if you give me a minute, I'll walk you around the room so you can see the flowers and the other pictures and such. So, but I'm going to let it clear out a little bit, okay? You have a reputation for it that you Go ahead, have out just so we can kind of participate. Oh, that must be Rambo. <laughs> That's the dark. Oh, my. All right, sir, we will see you tomorrow. It may not be in this format, but we'll be sure to record it just like we talked about. Okay. Thank you.